Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm Milos, and I will talk uh, about uh, Android and Android data binding and uh, using it uh, with uh, model view view model pattern. Um, so, um, let's start. Uh, so, we have a lot of architectural or structural, as you like, uh, patterns like MVC, MVP, and others. So most of Android developers use model view presenter pattern, or maybe not most, but it's very common. And uh, it's quite a good pattern, but it has a lot of boilerplate code. Uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, handling that developers uh, must handle at their own to code and code stuff. Uh, so. I will explain a bit about that pattern, uh, model view view model that solves a bit of that uh, hassle. And uh, I will say like um, we have our model always, yeah, and some uh, practice, uh, practices are that we can, um, we can separate it to different models, like for transport, our own data model, and view model, uh, where data binding, uh, framework or mechanism is helping us to, to complete this solution and about some pros and cons. So until, I mean, even now, a lot of developers use MVP uh, pattern, uh, which has a lot of handling in communication, interaction between presenter layer and the view. And view, here, view is very passive. Developer has to do it on his own, and especially in Android, uh, to get views, you need a lot of boilerplate to find view by ID, to set uh, any properties on them, and it can be very, very uh, boring sometimes, and uh, it takes time and a lot of code. It can, it's error prone sometimes. So, data binding mechanism is helping us to move this handling and to do it in much easier and decoupled way. So that's the mechanism. A lot of uh, different technologies use that from, from uh, long ago, like uh, Microsoft or Angular or some others. So what is data binding? Uh, Wikipedia states it's a process that establishes a connection between application and uh, application UI and business logic. So that's in general, a totally general definition. But for us in Android, it's a find view by ID killer, butter knife killer. It's not obligatory to kill butter knife, but I will recommend that so you have one library less. And it's a small extension to our XML layouts, uh, so we can use some small expressions uh, and to put a bit of logic in our layouts, which I personally don't like, but sometimes it can be very useful and to move some code in the layout. So it's announced by Google in 2015. Uh, it's official library, support library, so it's included in support library in, and it supports some uh, Android uh, API uh, 7 and above. So. From 2015, there are some improvements that they made. Like now, you can we can use. I didn't talk about. I will not talk about it. You can use lambda expressions in your layouts and some other stuff. But the the main things are here. So it's Google library. So to configure it, it's very easy. You just have to put in your build uh, Gradle file in app module uh, this data binding and set it enabled. So that's all you have to do to start, to start uh, using it. So now where to start? You will start uh, in your XML layout, and you have, you have to put as your root tag this layout tag, and inside will be everything, all your other tags and views and stuff. So, and you can pass actually your, any object you want to the layout. So, for example, I, here I put the user, and the view model is actually layer, so I don't pass directly user. It can be also the Pojo, just the user model, but the view model is just a layer between 
our classical model like user and the, the view. So in view model, we can make different view models for user view, for uh, list view, for detail view, for a partially detailed view. So we can have a lot of view models so to se totally separate uh, logic and, uh, and data that we need for each view. In our, in this case, with data binding and uh, MVVM pattern, our view is our fragment or our activity. So in this case, we pass some object, uh, which uh, data we will use to inflate our views to show in our views. How we do that? When we pass the object, uh, we gave it the name user. So in any view, we can just call with this syntax. Uh, we can call their uh, methods and uh, properties, attributes, whatever we want. So uh, we just bind it to view, and it's magically in behind it works. But not magically, we have to bind it also in Java, in our view, so in fragment or activity. Uh, Android will uh, create one binding class, which is called your activity or fragment name, and uh, suffix binding. So on that uh, class, you set your uh, layout, you set content view, and then you can put any object, like user or your view model, uh, you can just set from here. So uh, Android will bind that to the view where you defined, where you passed your uh, object in the XML layout. So uh, everything is uh, done in compile time, so it's, let's say, error prone. Uh, also, it can be doing list items, recycle items, etc. Uh, the point is uh, we can access them to th those properties, we can set them, and we can also access them. So we don't need to find view by ID. If binding dot and then last name, for example, or any uh, property of that object, we can get it um, because it's created by, by, by the other binding in, uh, under the hood. So we can access anything without butter knife and without find view by ID. So we are we moved uh, out a lot of boilerplate code, and we don't uh, we don't have to worry about it. Also, we have we can we can put except our data, our objects. We can do some imports like view class or any native class or other class. So we can use it and use it in that expressions, as I said, like which extend our layout and our views. So we can use some logical operations, some mathematical operations and use our imported class to get its own uh, attributes or constants, whatever we want. So that operations are quite simple. We can use them. I say I don't like that too much because then we, we can move too much logic in our XML layouts. But some simple like this, it's OK. So now, if you want. Uh, to, to have a two-way data binding, we have to, uh, or anyway, binding and two-way data binding, we have to put this uh, in our object that we are passing, we have to put this annotation bindable, the interface, which uh, provides connection and uh, binding to the XML layout, uh, where when we dis uh, defined in the, our view, to get that attribute, we need this annotation so the XML layout and under the hood will know to get exactly that attribute or property. So if we want to be uh, opposite, we have to notify that something changed in the model. So in the sellers, we just have to call the notify property changed or some other not, uh, notifying methods, which will end to pass the attribute, which is contained in the BR class, which is similar to our class that you all know in Android, so you can access from BR class any attribute you passed or, and you binded. Uh, so it's, it's just like that and everything is connected. We can also do a custom uh, or dynamic, let's say, bindings like if we want to pass image URL and we want to load image. We can b just pass in the, uh, we can just, uh, oh sorry, uh, this is items, so this is just for uh, for the recycler view or list view. We can also pass it, just 
one very important thing we have to call execute pending bindings so the recycle view behaves as it should be uh, without any lags or misbehavings so that's very important and also we have custom servers so if you want to load the image in the view we can just pass the image URL and we can handle it in our view model or wh whatever in our model it depends I like to use model view view model uh, we just have to define load image method or any method the name is not, is not important and we get the view the past things like uh, URL and error and then we can load image as we want with Picasso or without any library or on our own so and you, we can do that with any property custom custom binding so the, the possibilities are very large and everything can be binded to the view so it has a support in Android Studio um, syntax highlighting flagging expression language uh, XML code completion ref some references and etc uh, so uh, the like uh, the most important things uh, it's it's Google official library so I recommend it to use uh, references you can find the, the talk from Google IO it's for me it's the best resource official documentation there is also a serious article on big nerd ranch and by one guy from Poland Radek Piekars uh, Android con talk uh, you can find it on YouTube or anywhere so the summary it's a step forward uh, in architecture and decoupling uh, things in Android so before we used to do it in on our own to have presenter layer and to do there everywhere now we can totally decouple to have pojos for view model to put there our bindings uh, and to, to, to do, put there our binding attributes so and there in XML as they're bound to the view so everything is very decoupled testable and also the, it's uh, extensible very easy if we want to extend something or to to modify I had a really good experience with everything also I as I mentioned it's the official Google library so I recommend to try it and the only like bad thing is that compilers because everything is done in compile time so which is good for us because we know where we made some mistake or whatever but sometimes the errors are not very self-explanatory but if you're a developer you will find a way to manage it and I believe it will be much better in the future and that's it for me it's a lightning speech <laughs> thank you Yeah, questions? Somebody? How many units tests How many unit tests you have written so far using model you sorry, sorry, can you repeat? How many unit tests you have written so far using this pattern? How many unit tests? Yeah. You can do unit tests? And how many you? I tried. Yeah. How many like different tests or? Yeah, no, no, unit tests. Yeah, but for your logic. Different. I don't know. Maybe some small number just to test. No, nothing special. But it works because it's it just actually it extends base observable the the, the object the view model object. But it's almost a pojo, so it's tested is testable almost like pojo. Yeah, or even we can put. Uh, let it be like Pojo, but the fields to be observ observable fields. So we can do it that way, so it's then testable, also testable. Yeah. If we don't like to extend base observable or we can just implement observable in interface from the data binding, if our class also extended something. Sorry. And uh, how you compare that uh, with model view presenter? How do I compare? 
uh, I think it's better because, as I said, we don't have to manage our, at our own the interaction, two-way interaction with the presenter layer and view layer. And for me, that's better. And the view model is decoupled from our view, like from fragment or activity. I did it my, uh, when I did it. I totally decoupled it, so they are totally not connected. So I really like this way. I mean, we can do that mostly. M most of the things we can do with the presenter layer and MVP, which is good. But this way, there is no data binding, so we have to handle that. Okay.